morning everyone, good morning on Friday and welcome again to this mini-series. Actually, it's not mini-series, it's actually a series of mini harp lessons since I decided to continue this for undefined uh, period of time. That's episode number seven. Initially, it was supposed to be 10 episodes, 10 lessons, but I think I like it and I hope you like it too. Let me know how are you feeling today. Um, is it raining where you are? It was raining today in London. It's not raining anymore, luckily, but I think the, the best thing to have when it's grey like that outside is a cup of tea. Today, as um, some of you who were with me last week may know, I'm going to do things slightly differently. I told you that I was considering changing the formula of the live such that we, um, instead of one piece that I will present you with some general practice recipe, tips for difficult beats, where to start and what to focus on, um, which may be hard to do over a course of a week. I'm just checking, oh yeah, Instagram is back. Some, um, hopefully the internet will manage today. So instead of one piece, which uh, very often may take longer than a week to learn, I don't know many pieces, even for beginners, which are possible to learn to play in a week. Um, and I thought instead of that, I'll try to give you some more detailed um, practice advice, which you will be able to follow over a course of a week. So uh, when you click on the link that I've uploaded with that Facebook Live, it will take you to um, to my website where you can download from where you can download the PDF with uh, some exercises and a list of what are you going to do day one, day two, up until day seven. So today's topic is going to be scales. There are going to be four exercises in today's uh, live and in that recipe you are, you've got a rough guidance which exercise to do on which day, uh, how many repeat repetitions, uh, what to do next, and so on. Um, just checking my notes, and in the meantime, let me know if you're there, if um, if you're watching, and if you can hear me all right, just so I'm completely sure that everything is working on both sides, and I'm going to see... Yeah, so... Um, so, back to today's topic, scales. So. If anyone playing other instrument than harp is watching, maybe I need to make a short explanation what is difficult with scales on the harp, because I think for most other instruments that I can think of, the difficulties with learning um, all the notes in each scale, each possible scale, so if you're playing, um, I don't know, D major, you need to know how many sharps are there, and you need to know where are the semitones, how to move your fingers, uh, which notes to find on your instrument when you play. On the harp it's different, and I think the learning curve on the harp is much steeper at the beginning, because um, for us, regardless which scale we play, the movement of the hand is exactly the same. What changes is, in case of pedal harp, um, the setup of the pedals, and in case of a liver harp, that would be the levers that you raise or lower on, on the liver harp. And once that's set up, then you're all good to go. And of course, it takes a bit of learning and it would be good if you have some understanding of music theory. Um, that will make it much easier setting up the levers and pedals. But, um, but to be honest, um, after studying that for maybe two weeks, you should be fine with finding um, your levers, your flats, your sharps, and so on. But what I find difficult on the harp is the technical movement, um, the movement itself of playing the scales, and especially what you're doing when you need to um, start playing again, because you start with four fingers, and then you do that movement of keeping the thumb on one string and going underneath with your fourth finger at the same time, or third or any other finger, and then continuing. Many people find that hard because I agree it's quite an awkward movement. So we will um, we will, sh we will speak today about how to improve that and how to make that a bit easier because um, as soon as you're being more confident with that uh, technical aspect, you're all good with scales basically. So it's really worth, worth doing that. So um, if you look at the PDF that you will find on my, on my website, um, I, I'm not quite sure how can I upload that to Instagram, but if you follow to the link in my bio, it will take you to the page with the resources and that's the very first page uh, post at the top from you can download the PDF. 
Um, so there are three tips to start with. And actually, I'm already starting to think about the fourth tip, but I will tell you in a second. So um, the first thing is to um, keep lots of space between your thumb and all the other fingers because of that movement on the harp. Just wondering if I can move my phone so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Oh yeah, that will be perfect. So when you're crossing over or coming under with your other fingers, your thumb needs to be quite high to allow plenty of space for the other mm -hmm. fingers to come through. Because let's say you're playing 4-3-2-1, so you move, need to move all those fingers up to carry on. So thumb stays quite high, slightly above the middle of the strings, and all the other fingers stay low. And a good idea to think about that is that your thumb is pointing up to the ceiling and your other fingers are pointing low, so they don't um, go in that direction. They are more like that. And different people will have different amount of space between those two fingers, depending how long or short are your thumbs. Some people may have just about that much space. People with longer thumbs might have something like that. But as long as your thumb is slightly higher than the other fingers, you're fine. Then, second thing is that uh, I I know that there are different schools of harp playing. There are uh, some schools which teach you to have both hands in the air. I think that since right hand is quite close to the soundboard, we can use that soundboard to have right hand resting on it. So not pressing super hard, but just allowing it to rest so it can glide along the soundboard and use it as support when you're playing the scales. And left hand is slightly above and both hands, you need to have your elbow, elbows uh, quite high to allow uh, plenty of space for the movement, yeah? So it needs to all move like that. The elbow doesn't have to be really high. And also I've just noticed on the screen that I've done the thing I told my students not to do, which is not raising your shoulder. So your shoulder stays low, it's just the elbow that comes up. And when you're playing, the elbow is not higher than the wrist. So almost, but not exactly at the same level. And same for both hands. Right hand elbow will also help, help you move um, along the harp if it's higher. And that elbow needs to be what guides you on the way. So make sure that elbow, as you move up the harp, when you're playing the scale upwards, your elbow is helping you and not staying rigid and uh, not, uh, not allowing you to move. So that's something which I think made a big difference to my harp playing, remembering that, um, that first I need to move up as I'm playing. Actually, it's a mini movement. As soon as I play each finger on the way, that it's the elbow making space for um, for playing the scale. And that were the three things which you will find in the PDF. And now the fourth thing, which I uh, didn't include there, but which is related to some other things um, with uh, playing the harp, which is sitting high enough um, to play the scales, especially if you're going to play them for two or three octaves going quite high on the harp. You need to sit high enough because otherwise you will feel like you're reaching higher than you can. Your hands, uh, arms and shoulders will get really tired. So it's really important that you sit well when playing the harp. And if you need more information on sitting, you can download my ebook. It's on the top of the page on Facebook and it should pop on the website as soon as you're there, as soon as you follow the link in the bio. Okay, so that was um, some theory about how to start. And now let's move on to the exercises. So exercise number one, um, there are four of them, but the second exercise, third and fourth, it's more one exercise with some variations added. You'll see in a second. So number one, I'll start with my right hand, just so you can see better. It doesn't really matter which strings do you use. We will be moving up and down the scale anyway, but Let's start maybe with second finger on middle C. Hopefully that will um, allow you to see better, I hope. And then let's put our thumb on B, the string just below. So your fingers will be crossing, something which you will um, not really do most of the time in your everyday playing. And then let's start with second finger playing. The thumb is holding on to the string and second finger is playing, let's say, four notes. <laughs> Then we put the second finger back and we play the thumb. Remembering to bend and uh, remembering. 
remembering also to close the second finger all the way inside the hand. So if you are very new to playing the harp and you haven't done the exercises which um, are exactly like that but with fingers uncrossed, I recommend you start with, with that because they are also really, really useful. Um, maybe I should um, say a bit of a disclaimer that if you're very new to the harp, scales is not something that you um, start straight away. I think for most students, I would keep them off the scales for the first year or so because you need some really solid technical um, foundations before you can do those more complicated things. I don't know if you would agree with me. Um, I think that scales are actually quite challenging and um, without having the correct hand position, they can be extremely hard to play. I was struggling for a long time playing scales. I think they were, I think I wasn't given enough exercises um, as a student and I was basically told keep your thumb up, keep other fingers low and go on. And I wish I I was doing the stuff that, um, that I'm showing you today. So that first exercise, um, start with fingers crossed, play second, play the thumb, then swap the second finger for third and do exactly the same. Play the third and play the thumb. When you're playing third, second finger stays low, so nowhere there because it will get in the way when you're later playing scales. And same with the fourth finger. Now fourth finger goes on middle C, thumb still on B, playing fourth and then the thumb. It will probably feel quite awkward if you haven't done it before. Even for me it feels slightly funny because that's not something um, I do every day anymore. I, I just practice uh, scales. But we will get on to that. Um, I would recommend that you do that exercise for two days, just that. After the right hand, do left hand and do exactly the same. Lots of uh, space between thumb and second finger. And then I would say on the day three, unless you're super confident of that, um, Let's add something to our third and second finger. So we have thumb on B as it was, third finger on C. We play the thumb, we place the second finger and the thumb on D and D, on the, things, on the strings just above middle C. Then we play third finger and then we play thumb and second. I show it to, did, I show it to you again. So uh, third finger on middle C or any other string the thumb one string below, so they are still crossing. You play the thumb, third finger stays. You place second finger on the thumb. You play third. You play two and one. And I would repeat that quite a few times. And think of it as separate movements. So play, place, play, play. Probably after a while you will notice that you're uh, playing and placing almost immediately. But for now, try to think of it as a separate movement, so you really have all fingers placed before uh, before playing. And then the same with fourth finger on middle C and thumb on B. So you play the thumb, place this time three to one on the st three strings above middle C, play fourth, play all three. Okay, one more time. Second finger on mid uh, fourth finger on middle C, sorry, thumb on B. We play B, place three fingers on the strings above, play C, play the chord. And then you repeat the same thing with the left hand. So that was that second exercise on which we will be now building up. I would recommend that you do number one and two for the next two days. So that will take us to day four and five. So uh, just a quick reminder. So first exercise was just crossing over and playing whichever thumbs are on either side. And then exercise two, still fingers crossed. We play the thumb and then we play and place more strings. Okay, then exercise number three, to this thumb and third finger, we will add second finger. So we were actually starting with second finger below the thumb, second finger on A, thumb on B, and we will play second finger then place third finger, play thumb and do the rest as before. If you want, before you do that exercise, um, exercise number three, what you can do is play second finger with the thumb on, 
and just practice going to the third finger. So second place, third moving, or you can do second playing and second going up, just to practice that movement. And quite important here is that after you play second finger and you close it, you don't let it go up. So try to resist the temptation of raising that finger before you place it again, because that will slow you down significantly when playing the scales. So again, you play second, you close it, it stays low, you gently allow your hand to move so elbow stays very free, and then your second finger is there, or your third finger. So second place, and then third also stays low, opens slowly, and then you're there. Okay, so exercise number three, one more time in full. We start with two and one on. We place second finger, place third finger while holding on with the thumb. We play the thumb, place two and one, play three, play two one. And then to that, you can add more fingers. So you can start now with three, two, one on, and then you play third, place second, place third again, play thumb, place then you can add four fingers so that's getting quite long now we play four three two place three play thumb play third and the rest and then later when you are more confident about coming over try to find the tempo at which at which this will be quite fluid so you will not have that much uh, gap when you're crossing over so try starting with something really slow for example are coming one after another that was first variant of that exercise number three and then we do exactly the same with your thumb and the forefinger so we start with second finger on we play the second holding on with the thumb we put fourth underneath on the string above which here will be middle C I think I've changed something slightly but never mind a string above your thumb then you play the thumb hold on with the fourth Move your hand gently with the elbow leading and then place three to one on the strings above. Play fourth, play three to one. One more time. So we're starting with second and thumb on. We play second, hold on with the thumb, put fourth on the string above, play the thumb, open the hand, move up, place three to one, play four, play three to one. And same as with the previous one you add fingers below what you just played so then you're um, going to go from three two one four three two one then we will have four three two one four three two one okay and from what i remember in the pdf that's something which we will do for another two days so now you're um, on the day five that you start doing that exercise and you do that on the day six as well. When you look at the PDF, um, you've got two colors. You've got yellow and green. And yellow is what I recommend you doing. But um, if you want, if you feel that things are moving slightly faster and you feel more confident doing those exercises, then you can just carry on doing them, um, doing all of them, all of the extra ones which are in green. And you've got little boxes to tick to see what you were doing in every given day. Um, we were on exercise number three. And the last exercise is number four, which should be quite easy after you've tackled number one, two, three. It's basically the same as what we've just done before in number three. So um, you start. You can start with two and one on, play second, place third, play the thumb, play three to one, uh, sorry, place three to one, and then play three, play two, and one. So the only thing that changes is that you don't play the top notes as chord anymore play them one after another just as if you were playing a scale in fact you are actually playing a scale so one more time <clears throat> second and thumb on you play second place third play thumb place to one play three two one and then you add three fingers then you add four fingers and then you swap third for fourth and in the end the last um, variant of that exercise will be four three two place fourth Play thumb, place four, three, two, one. Place four, three, two, one. And that's it. Um, let me know if you have ever done anything similar. I think this exercise is in Betty Parrot book and also Maria Grossi. I wonder if you know 
any other variants. And I'm just going to have a sip of tea. <coughs> I had a bit of a cold over the last few days and I and I think I'm still recovering, so um, tea with um, with some lemon mm. without without milk for once. Hmm, and maybe I'll see what are you saying there. Hello Alex. Alex is sending some hearts. Good to see you. Good to see you, Magdalia, Philip. Uh, let me know if you can see me and hear me all right. Um, I can see that you joined, but probably I will see your... I'm not quite sure if I will see your comments straight away or, or later. And I'm also curious, were you struggling with the scales when you were starting to learn? And when in your um, hard playing did you start learning the scales? I think I was maybe given the pieces with the scales a bit too early. I, I was super keen at the beginning of of harp playing and um, I think I might have asked for those pieces but um, but my, I don't know if it was just the fact that I haven't done enough exercises before getting onto the scales or or what was it I found them quite difficult mm. okay with those exercises as I say you can modify them and if you feel more confident you can do more of them um, in the yellow path which I showed you, you are starting to skip some exercises from the five, I think. But if you want, you can still start from the one at the very beginning. It's a good reminder of where your hand position, what your hand position could be. And then uh, you can also practice them going down. I find going up on the harp in scales much harder than going down. It seems that going down is uh, rather easy as long as I remember to keep my thumb open when crossing over so you can definitely do those um, going in the other direction or you can um, just do going down the scale at the very end once you're at the exercise number four um, it's up to you and um, you may have thought that there won't be any piece today and i initially didn't think there will be a piece i thought that um, scales will be uh, and that the exercises will be everything we'll do today but actually i thought that I'll give you an example of one piece which I think is uh, quite a good piece to work on this case if you're if you're just starting. Um, let me put the tea away. That piece is a, a great free piece from ABRSM list, I think, and it's an etude by Carlo Grossi. I'll put a link to um, to where you can buy the book later in the in the description of the Facebook Live. Um, now I was trying to find out something more about Carlo Grossi and whether he's related to the famous Maria Grossi, the author of the book Peak of Exercises, and I, I don't know, honestly. Um, Carlo Grossi um, lived in 17th century and I don't think he was a harpist actually. Um, in the, um, on the internet it just um, says that he's, he was a composer, so I don't know if he was actually playing the harp and if he played the harp, what harp did he play? Alex, if you're still watching, um, Alex is um, my my good friend, and um, I sometimes think about him as harp Wikipedia. If I don't know something about um, harp composers or harp players, Alex will definitely know um, all of them, plus all the um, all the interesting gossip. So if you're still watching, and you know anything about Carlo Grossi's um, being related on to Maria Grossi or being a harpist, let me know. Um, that attitude is just half a page long and what's quite nice about it um, you don't get more than three bars of playing scales after you're swapping to the left hand so both hands get to play the scales and they are not too complicated um, one important thing here is to try and be uh, consequent with the fingering in that edition I see some bits where um, they don't quite stick to the same fingering that's uh, if you've got the music in front of you, that's line three, the last line on the third page, second bar. I think that third finger in the left hand should actually be second finger to uh, keep that sort of pattern consistent. And the same on the second page, first line at the top of the page, and again second bar in the left hand, I think that should be second finger. So if you're learning that piece, that might be something you will um, write in your music. And maybe before I say anything else, I'll play that to you so you know what I'm what I'm talking about. So, Carlo Grossi etude, and that etude can be found in the book called Le Plaisir de la Art.
Um, I, in the meantime, so with just the, so just with the um, corner of my eye that Facebook stopped uh, the transmission and it's trying to reconnect. Hello, and I hope you managed to hear the piece until the very end. I think it went okay on Instagram, don't know about Facebook, but if you missed anything, the full version of that live will be on my website. The same link as the one I posted for the PDF and the video will be uploaded there to the website so we can watch it in full, just putting the T away. Um, just a few words about that etude. So because the scales are coming one after another, after one scale, go scale going up, you're connecting to another scale, it's quite important that you only place your forefinger